Welcome back to the channel, guys. And if you're new here, then welcome. I absolutely love the game Palea. No secret there, since I cover the game pretty frequently on this channel, but that doesn't mean that I think that it's perfect. And while I've already talked about some of my likes and dislikes regarding the game in the video linked above, in today's video, I wanna talk more about the things that I hope to see added to the game in the future, since it is still an open beta after all. This list is in no particular order, and of course, these are just my opinions, although I have seen a lot of people asking for some of these things too. But with that being said, let's jump into it. A really big thing that I want to see as someone who loves to garden in Palea would be the option to obtain more crop plots. This one I know is one that I am not alone on for sure, definitely seen others mentioning it too. And my main reasoning for this isn't just for making more gold, but I like to have quite a few different things in the works at the same time for different purposes, like jams for cooking recipes, jams to eat to fill my focus bar, quests, and seeds partially for planting and partially for gold, but trying to make them all at the same time ends up being impossible or at least ends up leaving me a little bit shorter on some crops than others. There's just not enough room. For instance, recently I've been trying to grow apple trees again, and it's been a while since I've grown them. I knew they took up a lot of space, nine squares, but then they take ages to grow. Okay, not really ages, but 12 in-game days. And yeah, they give apples three more times per seed after the initial picking, but then they take six days to replenish in between as well. So that's one whole three times three plot taken up for 30 in-game days. Assuming you don't use speedy grow fertilizer, and I do, but I swear it still feels like it's 30 days. And that is assuming I only had one apple tree at a time, which I would prefer to have at least two. So then that would occupy two of the nine plot spaces that we're allowed to have currently in game. Then you have the blueberry and spicy pepper seeds that require four plot squares each to grow with blueberries taking up that space for 18 in game days and spicy peppers taking up four squares for 15 in game days. And tomatoes might only take up one plot space each, but they are going to consume that space for 10 days. Blah, 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 blah. If you farmed in the game, you probably get it. And I'm sure there are some of you that think nine crop plots is plenty. And yeah, you could argue that having only nine plots helps keep things even in the long run so that you don't have an abundance of crops to sell for money to help keep progression around the same for everybody so that no one person can get ridiculously quote unquote ahead, so on and so forth. And you'd be right in a sense. But I think it would be understandable to have a couple more available locked behind quests or farming level. Oh, and a little side note, if we could see how long our crops have left before they're done growing too, I'll gladly take that as well. Since we're already on the topic of farming, I've seen a lot of players, including myself obviously, speculating and wishing for a future pack where animal farming is introduced. Now obviously the Daya farm has Ormuz already, but besides watching them eat and sit down and be adorable, we can't interact with these massive cattle-like creatures at this time. We do know that they supply milk though, and I mean, why not have it where we can farm our own supplies instead of having to buy it from Zeki? Then that could open up new crafting machines, like one to turn the milk into butter, and could also be expanded by adding in Peckies, the creature that supplies Zeki with eggs and is used for the recipe Reth's Hot Pecky Wings. I would assume these creatures are similar to chickens. Not that I'm saying we should raise Peckies to make wings, but being able to harvest the eggs as an option for recipes would be nice as well. Plus there's also a mention of the Hopalong, a bunny-like creature mentioned when referencing Delilah's Hopalong puff dessert that was available in the 2023 Maji market. The description reading, soft and sweet, just like a real Hopalong, and so light and fluffy, it might float right to the moons, sold at Delilah's sweet treats. There's also been mention of another creature by Kenyetta called the Rithrock, which could very well be a horse-like creature, since there is a quest where you can obtain the Lucky Riff Rock Shoe, a decor piece that resembles none other than a horseshoe. Plus there's something called Hebeko, which are also mentioned in the game to be 10 times stronger than Ormu's and already have their own decor piece, the Log Cabin Hebeko Rug. So what kind of animal are they exactly? Well, that part we don't know, but the point is there are options already mentioned in game for animals that could be coming in the future. Plus it's not uncommon for cozy games to add farming, both crops and livestock, and they obviously already have crop farming added, so why not livestock too? I don't know about you guys, but I've been leaving a corner of my plot empty, hoping that this is coming very soon. And because we're already on the topic of animals, let's talk about pets. 
Unfortunately, this wish may never come true more than the others. And I'll explain why in a minute, but we already have the super cute Sandy Pal Cat available as a companion when you spend any amount of money in the premium store. Or there's the Nocturnal Island or Snowy Pal Cat when you spend 3,000 Pele coins, whether that be on outfits or gliders or whatever. Back when Pal Cats were announced originally, the team did say that the Pal Cats are their first pets to come as a bonus add-on with the purchase of Pele coins. So it was never confirmed that there would be more, but at the same time, they used the word first. So how would that mean that there's not more coming? Well, this is where things get a little bit iffy. Palcats were announced back on August 15th of 2023. So at the time of making this video, that was about eight months ago. Then on August 29th of 2023, there was a post made from someone known as Wizard Crab. That person is said to be responsible for the monetization of Palea. And in that post, they go on to essentially explain some backlash they got involving both outfit bundle pricing and the fact that some people were upset that Palcats were also being locked behind a paywall. They stated in that post, I also want to apologize in advance for what I'm about to say next. We don't have plans to add more pets or expand the feature anytime soon. Palcats will be it for a while. I know there's been a lot of feedback asking for at least one free alternative to be added to make things more fair, but we have no plans for this for now. Just know we're aware of it. So that does not sound promising regarding getting more pets in the game, but a lot can change in eight months. So I'm just gonna keep this on my wish list anyway and hope that the negative feedback they received initially doesn't keep them from adding more pets in the future. And at this point, I do also realize they've recently had a mass layoff. So obviously I'm not complaining by any means that we haven't seen another pet type by now. Literally such small peanuts in comparison. I'm just saying, I hope they do decide to add more in the future. Obviously, we all should probably already know Tao, the plume hound that is a companion with Hassian. So maybe it would be possible that we would have plume hounds as an option for companions. Or maybe the hopalongs or riff rocks, instead of being livestock, they could be companions instead. And I also hope that if they do decide to add more pets, they also include a little bit of an update to pets as well. One that makes them feel a little bit more lively. And maybe I'm getting a little bit crazy now, but after seeing the Palcat Palmats come out as part of the Paleo Twitch Drops event, I couldn't help but to think how cute it would be if our pet companions could be a little bit more relaxed on our home plots. It wouldn't really add gameplay per se, but a very cute thing to watch would be if our pets could run around on their own while at our home plots, have specific decor that you can unlock when you purchase that specific pet. And then those decor items could also be interacted with by that pet. So maybe the Palcats could use a Palcat scratching post, take naps on the Palcat rugs, and there could be specific toys based on whatever pet you have. Again, I know it wouldn't make or break the game. I just had a vision, so I'm sharing it. <laughs> I have quite a few little wishes for decorative purposes as well. One being when we buy add-ons and extra buildings for our home plot, we all know that they take some resources and then some extra real-time hours to build. Four hours, eight hours. But what about when you're just really in the mood to build and decorate and only that? That real life wait time ends up being a little bit of a buzzkill and can even ruin your gaming plans if you don't expect it and don't plan accordingly. But what if you could have the option to speed up those real time hours? Now, of course my idea isn't fully fleshed out. I don't know exactly how they would make this happen. Maybe they have the option to pay with in-game currency like gold, which kind of assumes that you have to have a bunch of extra gold sitting around. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you do, then that would be pretty handy. We could also really use the option to group and move multiple items on our plot all at one time. There have been times where I've put tables and chairs together with food on the table and decor, thought that it looked perfect there, and then I wanted to move it somewhere else. Currently, the only way to do that is to move the table and chairs individually. And sure, the food will stay on the table, but why not just have the option for the table and chairs to move as a unit? Or maybe you made a really cool design with your paths or flowers and decided they would look way better on the other side of your plot. Having to move those individually? Yeah, you probably won't end up moving them at that point or you will and it'll make you wanna cry the entire time. Because what if you get it over there and then you change your mind again? Yeah, sounds painful. So how about a tool that lets us group items and move them as a whole? Of course, more furniture is always welcome too. And more clutter items have been on my list for quite a while now. So I was really, really happy to see that they added plates and cutlery into a recent patch. However, I still would like to see some more things like books for bookshelves, baskets, or storage type containers, more small indoor plants, little things like that. 
How about the ability to also search for items within our storage? I can't always remember where things are at or if I even have them. So this would be extremely helpful. Plus finding that decor piece you need on the fly when you're decorating would make everything just feel so much easier. You could search lamp or dragon tide and whatever fits that keyword would pop up. Speaking of storage, I know 10,000 items is a lot. I really do, but sadly it's still a little bit limiting sometimes, especially with the great Cerna of 2024 happening right now. Even with my plethora of crafting machines constantly running, my storage just can't keep up with the amount of Cerna hides and Cerna meat that it's accumulated. So could we maybe bump the storage space up a little bit? Pretty please? And of course, because I just mentioned the great Cerna cut of 2024, I won't go into how difficult it is to obtain plushies or that I'm struggling to obtain them. I did get one though, so I'm trying to stay thankful for that. <laughs> But no, with the increased amount of hunting, I've come to the conclusion that we need two things. The first one being a little marker on our map, maybe in the shape of a pouch to show us where our Cerna loot landed. Some people like myself try to help others by marking the loot with a flare, but not everybody does it. And sometimes you lose out on your loot just because you literally cannot find it, which is a huge bummer because what if a plushie was in that one? And this could be for both magical and non-magical creatures alike, but obviously the magical ones are a little bit more tricky and easier to lose since they have the ability to teleport. And the second one, maybe this is just me, but when equipping the hunter's horn, the item that helps you track magical creatures for 15 minutes, I often end up accidentally consuming a second one because the item is still selected in my toolbar. So when I think that I'm trying to switch back to my bow and select the right arrows to hunt, I'm not. And mind you, it does not actually activate a second one, nor does it increase the timer, but instead it just ends up wasting the second one. I would really, really love to see them implement something where if you've already activated one, you literally cannot accidentally consume another. I don't even care if that means a little pop-up would come up saying you've already activated the hunter's horn or something like that. That would be better than wasting another one. <laughs> And like I said, maybe this is just me and my clumsy fingers for hitting the wrong button, but it still sucks. Next up, I've mentioned my love for the Hot Pot mini game that was part of the Maji Market many times, and I will probably keep on mentioning it until they do decide to bring it to the underground, but yeah, please bring it to the underground. <laughs> Some of you love the obstacle course, some of you love the heavy metal choppa, but some of us aren't good at either one of those, <laughs> but would still like something fun to do at the underground, so this would be a welcome option. At this point, I really only go down to the underground on a rare occasion when I'm looking for like a specific decor item, and that's because when I was going down there regularly, it seemed like the decor items weren't being rotated very well. Maybe it just seems that way because I already have a lot of the items, but with that being said, I would like to see some new decor and a better rotation of items at the underground. I've also contemplated if I want a catalog or not, like the option to order things through Zeki's or Tish's through the mail, but I'm kind of on the fence whether this is actually a worthy idea or not. I mean, most things you can craft by yourself anyway, and for those last few items that I'm having a little bit of trouble finding, well, if I could just buy them, then where would the fun be in that? So yeah, it's a thought, but do I really want it? I don't know. My wants list still has a few more things on it, like more romanceful character options, marriage, and furthering story progression with our Sheps post the Shep ceremony. But those are things I've mentioned in other videos, so I'm not gonna go over those again. I'm sure the second I'm done recording this, I'll think of like 10 more things, but I think that wraps it up for this video though, guys. What do you wanna see come to Pele in the future? Let me know in the comments below. I know you guys probably have so many ideas. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.